Switching gears here, a bipartisan bill to address the chip shortage advanced in the Senate 64 to 34. The bill would provide $52 billion in subsidies for U.S. chip makers. This does pave the way for larger chips act, the larger chips act package that could provide additional funding for research as well here. Um, a few of the other figures to really kind of break down the extent of this. It comes more than a year, basically. Uh, this arrives a year after the first approval of $250 billion in a bill that was really looking to have the U.S. compete better with China. And at the end of this, some of the companies that are very much going to be looking forward to this advancing even further, you've got companies like uh, NVIDIA, of course, you've got the larger Samsung and Intel chip factories that they've already committed to building out here in the States as well. But all of that really hinging on this broader CHIPS Act getting all of the way through. Nothing is free in this world, uh, as we all know. So I am very curious on what potential guardrails are in place if, if the government is going to give the chip companies this type of money. I see Bernie Sanders out there, Julie, suggesting that uh, if the chip makers do get this money, you won't be able to buy back stock. Uh, and that's not going to happen, but he's out there trying to push this through. Well, it's really interesting when you talk about incentive structures for building plants, which usually we talk much more about on the local level. And if you look at the long-term economic benefits, they don't always pan out. You also have, of course, plants like the Foxconn one that they just change their minds or they pull out in some way. Although Intel seems like it is on the cusp of breaking <laughs> they ground. They want to open that, this plant in that, in their in hands. that Ohio. Uh, Why should they be restricted potentially on stock buybacks? Let them buy back their stock. Let them open this big giant plant. Let them create their jobs. Well, that's not to say there should be no restrictions and no guidelines. There should be something. Rails. Yes. Buybacks. Right, I mean, exactly. So we'll see if there, this does widen out. I mean, the backdrop for this, of course, continues to be what's going on in the trip, chip industry. ASML, for example, the big Dutch chip maker. Um, cutting its revenue growth guidance in half. Um, it has to do with uh, some of what is going on with delayed sales recognition. So this has a little bit to do with sort of policy changes. But we are hearing from other companies like Taiwan Semiconductor have been hearing about concerns going later into the year and into next year mm -hmm. about some falling demand. So it was interesting because when I spoke to Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo late last week, A, she was confident that the CHIP Act would get through. But I also asked her about where we are in the CHIP cycle, right? Is it of concern that we are going to put investment into chip facilities at a time where we may be on the cusp of this chip cycle turning over. And she said, no, the long term, she didn't use this word, but the long term secular demand for chips is intact because of just all of the things that we use in our lives that have chips in them. So that was an interesting sort of longer term perspective on the industry. Absolutely. Continuing to track ASML shares here, well, supply chain constraints, at least uh, they were saying that they drive more fast shipments. We'll see how quickly those shipments can get out. But looking for expected 2022 sales growth around 10% for ASML as well. We'll continue to keep an eye on that company.